Hi everyone, thank you so much for stopping by my video today. My name is Laura and I would love to share with you some real-time watercolor art. I'm going to have a picture of this cute little acorn nomi on top of a pumpkin on my community tab right when I upload the video, right when it's halfway through. That way you guys know it's coming and you're more than welcome to uh, copy him and yeah have at him so i'm working on arch paper and i'm going to be using a combination of rosa gallery studio paints whatever i have hanging around over here i'm going to use it shouldn't take too much he's a small guy here so let's go ahead and get started i'm so excited so okay let me grab my stuff here and we're good to go Okay, so I went ahead and sprayed down the background. As usual, the moment I begin to <laughs> record, the sun decides to, yeah, you guys already know. All right, so this is a combination of gamboge and quinacridone own gold, new gamboge actually. And both paints are from Windsor and Newton. And this is just, I guess you can say an underlayer First wash of color. I love seeing this color peep through all over my art and because I'm using masking tape we'll have a nice white border around. I'm thinking we can add a little bit of burnt sienna but I want a more luminous burnt sienna not, some, not something opaque so the Van Gogh burnt sienna is one of my favorites to go for that effect. And I'll go ahead and bring that down here. You guys know I love to add, love to add, excuse me, burnt sienna to my pumpkins. So that's what I'm doing. Oh man, this is good stuff right here. <laughs> this is great. I'll just adjust my lighting with my cell phone as I continue. And his little acorn hat is going to be most likely a sepia or yeah or van dyke brown so definitely fall vibes i still got to get all of that stuff out of me some of my favorite artists are already beginning to share snowman tutorials and um things like that not yet i promise i'm going to be doing more as i consistently share more so i'm pretty excited about that all right I'm thinking this is good for right now. Uh, should I add a little bit more up here? Yeah. All right, so using my heating tool to speed up the drying process, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we can begin, or I can begin to share with you how I will be painting him in. All right, I think we're good. All right, be right back guys. Okay, you guys, so he is good to go. To that leftover burnt sienna mixture, I added the Van Dyke Brown from Holbein. And I'm going to be working dark to light, concentrating a good portion of this darker value color here in the corner and just slowly bringing it out. And if I come across any areas throughout the painting that are like super repetitious, I'll just press pause and tackle it on my own. Or, or if um, I remember to do so, I can also press stop, record it in time-lapsed format, and then stitch that video to this one. I'm beginning to learn. But yep, yeah, this is the Van Dyke Brown. Holbein and it is just oof, good stuff. I'm just dipping my brush into the water, pulling that out. I did bring his nose up a bit in the drawing. So the pencil lines are still there from that. Okay, I'm just dipping it in the water one more time here and just kind of pushing it to the side. Okay. 
All right, you guys, perfect example. I just pressed the pause button and smoothed that out with extra water. Got a little too tedious, so I just thought you guys didn't need to see all that. So now I'm going in with some sepia. Purposely making sure that bleeds in there beautifully. And then I'll slowly begin it to bring that up and that's gonna be the color for the stem. I think I'm using too big of a brush here. Let me grab the number four. Yep, much better. I don't mind that nice dark area right there, but this part up here, I do want it to be much lighter. Hmm, it's like the color doesn't wanna doesn't wanna take. Yeah, either way. Kind of just flicking it out here on the side. Okay, and then I'll just add a bit more water right here in the middle, just to encourage that to come down. And maybe and this is what my blending dish looks like so far so very little color and maybe we can even bring some of that in here in here and right here I don't work with small brushes enough and every time I do I always say I need to work with them more and I never reach for them <laughs> This is awesome. Okay, let's paint the leaf. You already know what green I'm gonna use. Yes, sir. It's gorgeous. PG8 green. Doesn't need no introduction. It's a gem all on its own. Day I'm able to get my hands on this green in a tube, I'll buy like two or three of them because it is so beautiful. I'm actually going to put that right there. I thought that was still wet. I was hoping to get some wet onto wet, but that is okay because we good. We are good. It's been a while since I have painted a pencil, a pencil sketch. So I'm excited to share that with you. If you're watching, let's go ahead and pull some of that gorgeous green out. Ah, love it when the sun shines like that. Just reshaping it a bit here. And then I'll come back later on. I'm actually going to push this out just a bit right here. Yep. There we go. I'll come back later on and tidy this up. You know, as a matter of fact, I'll grab some of that beautiful golden yellow and add it to whatever I have left here of the green. A little bit of that in there. All right. And you know what? Because <laughs> I love that green so much, why not go ahead and use that color for his shoes? So cute. All right. Let's go ahead and and do that. Um. Okay, backtracking here, give me one moment. I do like to work back to front, so maybe it'll be a good idea to uh, work on his beard. Work on his beard first and then bring in that darker color on top. So let's go ahead and take care of the pumpkin first. Oh my gosh, you guys, look what I found. I found a gem. Well, to me it is. I found my White Knights watercolors. I just have a few of them left. It's number 315 and it is an orange color, PO64. Oh my goodness, love, love, love. 
So I'm going to grab some of that. Oh man, that's some good stuff right there. I also have the cadmium orange too from them. That would be number 304. Show and tell time. Okay, anyways. <laughs> I'm going to mix that with, uh, I don't know, whatever I can reach for here. What is this? Gamboge? Okay, Gamboge. And then the entire pumpkin will get a coat of this color, just like a flat wash of it. And then I'll come in afterwards and tidy it up with some burnt sienna for the different sections. That's probably the area where if I do try to use a time-lapsed format editing style, that's probably where I'll, I'll do that in that part. A lot of my favorite artists do that and I, I love it. I do enjoy more of a real-time part, but I'm beginning to understand why they would do that as well. This is the Hobby Lobby's brand Master's Touch, round number 10, and it is good stuff. I'm just add some right there. Oh. Yeah, I always go outside the lines. Oh well. Okay. And I'll most likely add something down here at the bottom. So it's just not like floating. You know, I should add that now. Maybe like a little green grassy area so I'll just take whatever I have left on my palette of that color and begin to just drop it in right here I just want a small amount of it yep just like that there we go oh my gosh that's cute okay <laughs> all right that looks good. Uh, let's see here. My apartment is naturally dry, so some of this stuff is already dry right here. All right. Let's go ahead and begin to work on his beard. And I'm going to bring out that cobalt gray mixture that I did the other day with you guys, the Rosa Gallery dupes. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yep, here it is right here. So I'm going to use that for his beard. Let's go ahead and mix. What was the combination here? PB28, PR108, and PBK7. Okay, I'll just, I'll do that. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, you know what? No, no, I will not. <laughs> I haven't used my true cerulean PB35 blue from Windsor & Newton Professional in a long time. So I is going to cheat. I'm going to cheat. All right, so I'll replace that for the blue. Um, the PR108, yeah, I have that. I'll stick to that too. That would be the cadmium red. Just that on its own, just those two colors on its own, that's actually really nice. Let me just grab a bit more of the blue. That's actually really pretty, so I'm going to stick to that. Yeah, I'll do that. And then you can just add more water. See? All right. Yeah, that's still dry. I mean, what? 
Okay, uh, that's all right. This area up here is dry though, so let's go ahead and just add the darkest value area around here. Sorry, I have such a not so aesthetically pleasing background here. <laughs> I'd like to work on that, but I think this is uh, this is okay for now. All right, can you see the colors together on his beard already? So nice. Adding some water, tapping it off. Oh, love it. And of course, because I have that underwash, the quin golds and the yellow and whatnot that can be seen too and it's separating on my blending dish too that is just so lovely to see very nice okay if some of this color gets into my pumpkin or the pumpkin color into his beard, I'm okay with that too. I think I'll be fine here. Yep. Might get a little run in, but I'll just push it out. And that's it. That is it. Wow, this is awesome. We're not even at 20 minutes and I've covered everything with you guys in real time. His nose is a little wonky there. Meh, yeah, that's all right. All right, this is gonna take a few moments to dry. The skin for his little chunky nose will be the last thing I do. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. Let me heat set this. Okay, so before I heat set everything, this area up here is dry, and I wanted to separate this part from this part. So I just added some more of the acorn hat mixture in there. And I think that's looking pretty good. You guys are seeing everything in natural light right now, so this is what it looks like up close. Okay, be right back. Okay, you guys, just take a look at how beautiful that cerulean blue is popping out. I think it looks wonderful. Okay, so I have changed my mind about the color of the shoes because looking at the color combinations from the Rosa Gallery dupe video, I'm thinking maybe we can also use um, some pretty purples here. I don't know, that would look good. Yeah, that would look good. Okay, so what, what do I mix here? Okay, I had to press pause for a second. Clarette, it is number 325 from White Nights and I have had this color for over three and a half years and it looks a bit funky, but it is still beautiful. So I'm going to mix that with some of the Cerulean Blue from Windsor and Newton, and that's going to give me, oh, that's beautiful. Yep, I'm good. I, I, I like what I'm seeing here. A little bit more of the claret, though. Okay, that's going to be the color for the shoes. Oh, how fun. What I'll do is I'll just outline everything. With my brush here dipping a bit more into the claret. It definitely was one of my immediate favorites. Excuse me. Using Going back and forth here. Oh, this is wonderful. I didn't do the best job at keeping 
the shoes like perfectly drawn equally. So you might see a little bit of a difference between how they look. Paint like you swatch. <laughs> I'm just very happy right now with how this is turning out. Yeah, one shoe always looks a bit different than the other. This claret is a granulating beauty. I have a soft spot for colors like this. All right. I can come back in a little bit and take care of that, but yeah, I could see the difference in them, but yeah, that's pretty good. Can't get enough of that cerulean blue. Nope. I cannot. I added a bit more cerulean to the beard mixture there and just added that there because why not? Okay, uh, let's begin to work on the pumpkin. Mm, no, because that might, yeah. Let's go ahead and begin to work on uh, the hat here. So back to, let's see here, back to the acorn mixture here. Um, give me a second, guys. I need to find my line work again. Okay, so I found my lines again. And I begin to add the final touches to this area here. Hmm. What is up with this? Doesn't want to take. There we go. I've never had this happen with Arch paper before. There we go. I don't know. I guess all that'll have. I guess it'll have to do. I guess this. Yeah. I don't like that, but oh well. Oh well. That will have to do. I'll tidy up the leaf now that I'm here. for a much more rendered look today and I will add the sepia on all the lines. Let me go ahead and do that and that's just me going on like this. And then taking a second brush bringing some of that color out. Sometimes you have to drop in the color, depending on the look you're going for. Drop in the color while the area is still damp to have that 
more uh, feathered outlook. I don't know how to describe it, but you guys know what I mean. So let me go ahead and um, I'll do one more here. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I wanted to check in with you and show you how it's looking so far, and I love it. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a few of them in the opposite direction so you can see just how nice this look is. I'll just take this one right here. It doesn't have to be in the beginning over there. And what I do is I just bring the blend up into the stem of the acorn to keep the line continuous. Hope that makes sense. I'll just clean this up right here. Even if some of this gets into the beard, it that never bothers me, but you can see how beautiful this more rendered look looks. It's highly appealing to me, and um, yeah, I love it. Truth be told, uh, I'm thinking about doing clip art. I don't know. It just, I don't even have the stuff to begin, but I just look at all the wonderful clip art and, you know, watercolor clip art, and that could be a good side hustle. Let me go ahead and finish this up. Nelly, let me tell you, that was 35 minutes plus worth of footage that you guys will see in a more compressed video. Boy, oh boy, I definitely got into it even with the colored pencils. Didn't even think I was going to be inspired to do that, but I was. And um, from the Prisma colors, I used the white, the burnt ochre, one of my favorite greens, kelp green, and black cherry. And then from the Artex, I used light umber, cloud blue, 50% warm gray, which is a really beautiful um, gray color. I use that for the beard and um, for his nose was the beige. So yeah, I don't think I've ever shared that before in a video with you guys. And I do that a lot more often in my art, but I'm sharing more often. I'm being more consistent. I don't have a schedule just yet, but I do try to share a couple times a week and um, I'm loving it. So let's go ahead and do the peer reveal because I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm over it. All right, let's, uh, yep, this way. This is uh, the Dollar Tree brand 
masking tape. <clears throat> Excuse me. And for the gold that I used uh, for the splatter is this uh, Inca Gold by CSY. It behaves really funny, but it is really pretty, especially um, once it dries up. Very pretty sheen. Hey, no peep through of color so far. Very cool. Okay. Well, there you have it, guys. A small little gnome postcard. This actually turned out really nice. I love those white borders and you'll see in the video how I added those white little dots with the Prismacolor white pencil. Lots of beautiful texture, splatter, something different because it's been a while since I've done any of this. I've been doing a lot of swatching and line work. I think you guys saw her the other day in the community tab and I also worked on him so this is what I'm used to so oh my goodness I hope you enjoyed today's video and um okay I'll let you guys go now I can't wait to share some more fall inspired art I'm not done yet with November and fall so um okay I'll see you all soon had to do a quick close-up quick close-up quick close-up <laughs> I'm actually glad I used that damp brush to go over the edges, so. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.